What's going on everyone? We are down at the ISRA range, the Illinois State Rifle Association, down here in Bonfield, Illinois, outside of Kankakee. And I'm here with Terry Numero One. And um, Terry, we came down here because it is sight-in day. This is one of the more exciting and most visited days here at the range, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's quite busy today. Uh, again, sight-in day is uh, something that we offer once a year. Mm -hmm. um, Primarily, it's designed for guys to come down side in before the deer season is primarily, but that doesn't have to be the reason. Sure. But uh, and we're open to the public, which is, again, this is a uh, organizational range. So for the first time, we actually open it up to uh, the public so they can come in and sight in their rifles because, as we talked before, you know, that's one of the major things we need to make sure your guns are on. So Absolutely. And for only 10 bucks to come in and see a facility like this, um, it's a great tester day too, right? It's like kind of testing the waters to see if you might want to become a member, see what they have to offer. But you get trained professionals here uh, educating you and showing you safety and getting your firearm ready so that you don't miss that crucial shot this year. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, that's actually what we hope for. We hope that yeah. people actually want to join, you know, once they see what we offer down here. Uh, we do set up the targets and we have all the different targets set up at different ranges. And uh, we do have, I believe we still have gunsmith on duty here. So, you know, if there's those kind of issues. So yeah. we try to make it as pleasant as possible to come in, take a look at what we have. And again, uh, again, primary to cite those uh, slug guns in as well. We get a lot of them down here for, since we're in Illinois. Absolutely. I guess not now, straight wall cartridges, yeah. yes, but yep. you know, so the answer is, so we have both of those so we have that you have that option today absolutely and uh like terry just referred to straight wall cartridge so illinois for years as long as i've pretty much been alive for um you can only shoot deer two different ways well three i should say black powder archery or um slug gun um but now there is amendments right to those rules yeah, and again, I don't want to, it's, it's kind of complicated, but it's basically straight walls and there's certain requirements, but you know, certain certain cartridges now can be used, they have to be single shot. So yep. guys with bol bolt actions or mags have to have a, you can buy blocks for them, you sure. know, so only one, but it does, give, it does give everybody a different opportunity now in Illinois to, to be able to do that, which is actually kind of exciting, actually. Absolutely, especially, you know, in the home of one of the greatest states for whitetail hunting, um, but it's pressured. So a lot of times you can only get these deer to come in so far and that's limited a lot of hunters. But now I think with those changes, we can see some more um, trophy deer being harvested. I think so. You know, again, the, the straight wall cartridge is going to give you a little bit more distance, I think, mm -hmm. the accuracy at least. So again, you have, to, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer. You have to look at your ballistic charts, you know, making sure that, you know, you're making an ethical kill. You don't want yeah. to be shooting something at 400 yards when, you know, the foot pounds are not good enough at that point. So no, you need you need to know the cartridge you're shooting. And I think most, most hunters do that because nobody wants to wound something. So no. uh, to do that. So it's a great opportunity yeah. that DNR has given us. So. And if you were one to go out and get a rifle like that for the first time, today would even be a better day, not only because you have the pros on site to help you sight in that scope on there, but because there's a long range here that has electronic targets that you can actually get instant reports on how you're shooting, what you need to sure up or get a little better on. Well, one of the nice things we have actually on the two and the 300 yard range, mm -hmm. which is a considered the same range, but sure. we have electronic ticker system. So you can actually, on that targeting system, you can actually hook it up to your phone. When you shoot, it actually shows the target and it actually shows your placement of the target, which is actually pretty cool. How cool so is that? you, you yeah. get instant re instant notification of where you're at. So you can make those adjustments right there. So you don't have to you know, take a spotting scope if you're shooting 300 yards, you know, a small bullet hole is really kind of hard to see, even with, even with some of the best optics, you know? So the answer is this gives you that feedback and that's something that's available to members all the time. We have two, two stations that are always set up for people to use. Yeah, and besides the rifle, because um, I'm hearing all sorts of different firearms going off today, what other opportunities do individuals have if they come here to the Israel range? Well, the nice part about this place, and people, when I talk to people, they don't realize what we have here, but we have actually six dedicated pistol ranges. Okay. So we're in one of these right now. I we call are. them well, I call them a tactical bay. We just call them bays. So this is range eight, but we have eight. We have four of them that are basically identical like this. And uh, this is basically what I'm going to call a pistol caliber range. Mm -hmm. That's how we go by kind of by caliber. So you can come in here and shoot. Uh, this is a tactical range. The reason I call it that, at least myself, is this is where you can actually draw from holsters. You can move, come whatever. We have two two pistol ranges up in the front that are actually where everybody shoots from a common line and yep. you move the targets back and forth, uh, no holster drawing there. So we have a variety of those kind of things, but we do have six that are dedicated for pistol. We have a small archery area, 
yep. that we have pla LA platform, so you can shoot off that if you wanted to. Which is really cool because, you know, there's so many, everyone in their backyard can shoot at still targets or a, a foam deer, but to actually get up in an elevated platform like you're in a stand, it's crucial to learn the drop of that arrow and everything. And that area is kind of nice because it's, if you've been in it, it's all wooded right around the yeah, area too. So it kind of gives real. it kind of gives you that feeling that you're actually out in the woods. So which is pretty nice. Absolutely. So you have that. We have again three rifle ranges. We have again from a, a 100 yard range, a 100 meter range and uh, the two 300 yard range for rifles. Yeah. We have a shotgun area with the th two throwers that are always there available to members. So out there, and then we have uh, inside our building, we actually have an air air rifle pistol. They have a leagues that shoot in there. So that's part of the building's designed for that. Absolutely, and I think I'll make the announcement about the newest attraction coming, a hatchet slash throwing star range. Well, we, um, have, we have that going on right now, and I believe it's still under construction. And last, yeah. last weekend, it was still under construction, so I, well, don't know if it, I don't know if it's, they redid some of it, so I'll make it a little safer. Yeah. To be honest, I know nothing about it. It's, hey. it's one of those, but it's an opportunity that we're gonna have for members and to, to come down here and be able to do that, which is, is different, so. Well, luckily for you, Terry, today's sight-in day, and we don't have to sight in a ninja star, okay? So we'll be talking firearms only. Well, okay, well, fire, that's that's better, because uh, like I say, I, I know nothing about it, but I know there there's people that are quite interested in it. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So, so at least it gives that opportunity. Now, Terry, before we go and look at all these ranges and kind of talk to some of the individuals that decide to come out today in sight-in day, we're doing this, not like you said, not everyone, but for the most part, it's because the hunting season is underway for archers already, and that gun season's right around the corner. Why do you get so excited for hunting every year? I'll tell you, I I don't get excited just in the fall. I hunt, I hunt, try to hunt all year long. So Absolutely. my answer is I'm a hunter and I like getting out in the woods and I, I enjoy that. So uh, it's deer season. I mean, if you're, a, if you're a deer hunter in Illinois, you gotta get excited. You, you know, the answer is because it's all been there. You know, and to get be able to get out there and uh, do be able to do that, I, I believe today, if I'm correct, today is the opening day of duck season in the northern zone. So I know a lot of my duck hunting buddies are out hunting right now uh, to be able to do that. So that that season, I believe, open today. So a um, lot of opportunities in Illinois to hunt, and again. Uh, I'm a waterfowl, you know this, I'm a waterfowl oh, yeah. guy, so oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I consider myself a goose hunter, but you know, the answer is that's really what I like to do. Uh, but uh, deer hunting, opportunities, everything right now. So it's, it's full bloom right now, and it's, it's only gonna get better as the weather gets a little colder. Awesome. Well, hey, Terry, how about you say we take a trip around the Illinois State Rifle Association? Let's go. All right. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. All right, Terry, so we left the pistol ranges and we're back up here that sometimes these are pistol ranges, correct? These technically uh, for normal shooting for range members yep. would actually be a pistol, Pist pistol caliber range. Pistol well, caliber, right. Some, well, can... some rifles shoot yeah. pistol size uh, rounds. Correct. Um, but today we are, again, we're sighting in. So we are talking hunting and we have a lot of slug guns back here. It sounds like a little louder than I'm used to over here at the pistol range. It's a little louder today. And again, this is this is uh, one of the ranges. This is the first step when you come in for siding mm -hmm. is we have a uh, basically up to 50 yards here. What we do is we want to make sure everybody's on paper first. So we don't want you going shooting two and 300 yard ranges. You know, we want to make, we want to ensure for safety purposes, we want to ensure that you can actually hit the paper. So that's what this station, this is the beginning station for anybody that would show up for siding in days. Yeah. So it's a quick thing, hit the paper a few times, now you can move to another range. 
And whether you're a beginner or an expert marksman, um, really that's how you should kind of work into a firearm, right? Is, is seeing how accurate you are at 50 or 100 and then testing your limits a little further, you know? Oh, we're, we're firm believers of that down here. All yeah. of us. And the answer is, hey, we always start short, make sure you're on paper, go to the next side up, you know, our, our 200, 300 yard range. Size all the time. Hey, make sure you know where you're at at 100 yards before you go attempt two or 300 yards. Absolutely. We don't. We have still baffles, as you'll probably see, mm -hmm. for safety purposes. We don't want you hitting them. Yep. So the answer is, it's all it's all in the name of safety here, and that's that's our primary goal. Goal here is to keep people safe down here and and, and have a great shooting experience at the same time. Absolutely. Well, hey, let's take a closer look at what they're doing behind us. All right, let's let's do it. All right. All right, everyone. Well, hey. The shooting stopped for a second. We came into our first range. We're here at range two, where everyone is getting paper qualified. Our, and we got Ryan here next to me. Ryan, what's going on? Have we hit the paper yet? Tightening it in, zeroing right. it in. All right, all right. What's up? You just told me you're not a member here. You came in to, for sight in day. What's your uh, experience so far? It's been awesome. Uh, I came here last year for the first time yeah. with an invite. That's why we're back again this year. The amount of uh, options they have for sighting in is, is great, no matter what sort of firearm or caliber that you have. And it offers that flexibility here, so it's, it's great. Absolutely. Now, you've got, a, you've got not a pistol on this pistol range here, so you're sighting in your slug gun, huh? Yeah, mine and a buddy of mine, 12-gauge uh, slug gun for white-tailed deer, yeah. Absolutely. Are you an Illinois resident? Sure am. And do you hunt in Illinois? I do. Uh -huh. What's what's so important about making sure you come each year and sight into your gun? You want to make sure your first shot is hits that animal in the right spot and it goes down and uh, you harvest as quick as you can. You don't want to injure anything. You want to make sure you take down what you're aiming for first shot. What's our uh, if we had a perfect hunting season this year? Yeah. What does it look like? What what do you leave the year with? Well, we know there's no such thing as perfect. But if I had to say it, you'd fill both your buck tags and uh, have two wall hangers. All right, all right. So two trophy deer hoping at the yeah, end of the season. And I guess uh, you would probably get two doe in the freezer as well with your doe tags. So, yeah, so it's the more meat, the better in the freezer. Well, hey, I don't want to interrupt too long, but it's cool to see everything going on here and all yeah. the different uh, firearms being used. But everything's safe. Everything. Everyone looks like they're having a good time, and uh, this is what to expect for the sighting day at Israel. Huh? Yeah, that's number one thing. And next year, I'm excited. I'll be bringing my son back here for uh, for some. Uh, First of all, gun safety training and then uh, learning how to shoot. Teaching the next generation, That's super right. important. That's right. Absolutely. Well, hey, Ryan, thanks for taking a second. Definitely. Take right. care. We'll go check the next range, everyone. We stopped at the 100-yard range. This seems to really be where our rifle hunters are really sighting in their scopes, their iron sights, whatever it is, maybe even trying out a new uh, firearm for the season. And uh, Terry, you spend a lot of time at this range, right? I spend a lot of time at the 100 yards and 100 meter range. So yep. the answer is uh, that's where most guys with rifles are gonna come because they want to try to reach out and pick something. So. Uh, this range, actually, if you look at it, once we get a view of it, you you actually see we actually have targets set up yep. at 50 at 50 and 100. So you yep. get your choice, so it gives the opportunity for guys to shoot a little bit closer, a little further than the last place. But begin to side in to actually get very accurate in where the, where the bullet placement's happening. So a uh, nice place to do it here. And I like the targets you guys have up. You can actually see the kill spots marked oh. on the animals on these paper targets. Yeah, you'll see we have target. I believe there's a bunch of deer targets off. Obviously, I think I actually saw a hog target I saw somewhere, a hog, yep, yep. couple of hog targets up closer. So uh, the answer, so it gives a little variety, it's something different to look at other mm -hmm. than just, you know, crossing uh, circles on a, on a target, perhaps like we did on range, range sure. two. So sure. this is where it makes it a little bit more realistic. So you can you can actually see your, your bullet placement in the vital areas, so. Yeah. Now, Terry, I know you have um, a plethora of firearms at home. Um, you, you hunt different different things around the world. They require different ammunition. They require different size. But <clears throat> we're we're getting close to deer season here. You know, it's already open for the archers. When you're going in the Illinois or any of the Midwest area, you know, what what are you usually using um, to hunt deer, and how far are you hoping to take? Them? Well, deer hunting, you know, the, the problem with the modern guns anymore is you can get some slug guns that are pretty accurate, you know? Yeah. So the answer is, uh, you know, I've I got a couple different ones I use, but basically if I'm gonna deer hunt, I'm gonna use a slug, sure. you know? So you're you're shooting, uh, I got a 20 gauge and 12 gauge, so it depends on what I feel like shooting at the point, you know, so you have that. So uh, the biggest thing is with slug guns, I found in my personal experiences, you really need to check out different companies of slugs. Yeah. Because 
certain slugs shoot better in certain guns. Okay. You know, and I have a friend that has the same exact slug gun I have. Yeah. You know, and we shoot different. We shoot different manufacturers. Sure. He has one that shoots a little bit better out of his and whatever. Does it really make a difference in the in the in the kill of a thing? I just want to be the most accurate I can. Absolutely. I want I want the most you know um, humane kill I can get. Absolutely. So the answer is to me that's important. So that's one thing when I get a new rifle or anything I shoot for hunting purposes, yeah. I'm always checking out different manufacturers or reloads or whatever I'm going to do is make sure you get the best shot, the best accuracy out of that thing. And be surprised. Some you know it's a little it's a little. Different. You know, sometimes you want this this uh, ammunition to actually fit this rifle, and it doesn't. You know, yeah. and it's like I've been caught in that situation a few times. So, you know, the answer is you just got to kind of see what your gun really likes, and it takes time to at a range and to look, shoot these distances to see that. Absolutely. Now, Timmy, while we're waiting for a ceasefire here, real quick, I thought we'd take two minutes um, to have a more leisure conversation and really just talk about the excitement of hunting and. You told me last time I saw you about a great hunting story up on the side of a mountain, and I thought it would captivate the audience. You want to share that story with me real quick? So my experience is when I was in, actually in North Brooks Range in Alaska, okay. you know, up in the tundra, basically. I got bluff charged my first my first full day in Alaska. I got bluff charged by a grizzly bear. Could have been over. That could have been it. Been over, you know. And the answer is, we kind of knew he was there, so we weren't sure if he was still there. We saw him the night before, but so we walk up and he comes up and he he ruled the roost, you know. So it's this area, so we let him have it, you yeah, know. But yeah. the answer is to have that experience for me is was I, I can't I can't trade for anything. I've had some other unique experiences, but. Sure. To me, that that one that usually is at the top of the list because yeah. most people don't really get bluff charged by a grizzly bear. And you're out, you know, and this is we're out in the middle of nowhere, yeah. you know. So I mean, this is this is tent camping for seven days, knowing a grizzly bear is 600 yards down from you in the tent. You know, kind of gives you something to think about during the week. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, and but that's why you always got to be ready. You know, if you're doing a hunt out west or to Alaska, it's important to have a sidearm on you as well. You know. Well, the, the funny part about it, when I went to Alaska, I actually bought a, a firearm to a firearm to take up with me, yeah. and I ended up leaving it because I because I couldn't make the weight limit in the bush plane. Because oh, they had the weight limit, so I actually something had to go, yep. and it was that. It wasn't going to be my boots or anything like that. It was just, uh, I finally took the sidearm, and by the time you do the sidearm and the you know the, everything else the that goes with it, so the, the answer right, it's the holster and the ammo. It's like something had to go, and it was it. That was it. So uh, I still had my rifle with me, but you know, in Alaska, to be honest, Alaska, nobody nobody wants to like shoot a grizzly bear. And Every, we try to avoid, guides try to get in a situation where we totally avoid that because that's the last thing that any, but anybody wants to do up yeah. there, yeah. Including, including people that are hunting. We don't want to do that if we don't have to. Absolutely, no. They are a part of the majestic nature. You know, you hope it never happens. Um, it's just always good to be prepared. Oh, no it's, it's definitely, you need to keep your uh, eyes open there, definitely, so. No, no doubt. All right, well, it sounds like we're going to take a second and we're going to pull over here and have a chat. All right, have a little chat with somebody here. All right, everyone, we have stepped into the range. There's a current ceasefire going on, and we thought it'd be a perfect time to talk to Range Officer Tom here. And Tom, you run uh, the Bonfield Muzzle Loader Club here. Yes. And separate entity, but uses the facilities here, right? Oh, yeah. And talk about it a little bit, because I'm, I'm seeing these muzzle loaders, and it's a little different than things we see in today's time, huh? I can talk to you about them all day. I have uh, two cap locks over there, and I have a flint lock. Yeah. Now, if nobody knows what I'm talking about, they don't understand. Um, I shoot traditional. I work with a powder horn, and my bullets are in here, and I have some patches over there. If I'm shooting flint lock, I use these tools, my powder measure, everything contained. Absolutely. Now, for people who have no idea what a muzzle loader is, um, this is a gun that would have been more common probably in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. actually, it, uh, the, uh, the flintlocks go even further back than it. Our American Revolution was fought with flintlocks. Okay. Okay. Cap locks didn't uh, revolve until the uh, early, uh, about 1830, 1840. Okay. Uh, and Englishmen designed and developed the cap lock. So, and then after that, the transition was, and I, I don't bring my Civil War rifle out here, but uh, then they transitioned from using a, a ball and a patch to using something called a minier ball okay. or a mini ball. So they eliminated the patch, it was faster to shoot. Then of course the cartridges all came in. Oh, yeah. That all was Civil War brought all that around. But uh, American Revolution and before that it was all flintlocks. So Tom, before um, 
Illinois opened the straight wall cartridge rule, black powder was really the way muzzle loader was the way people hunted oh, deer yeah. in Illinois. And what, uh, I mean, talk about how much goes into that because it's, there's a lot less uh, stealth because you have a lot more process to get that gun ready to fire. We have guys who shoot black powder and hunt all the time. Yeah. And they do it traditionally. They do it on their feet, stalking an animal through the woods. If you get the muzzle loader in a newspaper a magazine or muzzle blast, you talk all about these guys. And they hunt muzzle, muzzle loaders all over the world. Big game. Okay, I mean, big game with black powder. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, here you can you, uh, elk, deer, whatever you want, bear. Bear, I'm gonna go with a 54 caliber or a 58 caliber. So um, this, we shoot 50 calibers, tonight. we don't burn up a lot of powder. Uh, black powder, you know, muzzle loader guns forever were the firearm of self-defense. And then there became more advancements in technology and then it was used more for regulated hunting. Now, what do you see? Are people still hunting with them? Or is it more of a not niche a, hobby? Not, okay, that we do have a couple of uh, black powder days for deer season. Yep. And, but uh, a lot of the guys are going out of state uh, and, and you know, Minnesota, stuff like that, where they can actually do the stalking. Yeah. We have guys that go out there and they put all the gear on their back in the dead of winter and go hunting. And you know, these are the guys, we call them hard dogs. They are the you know, ultimate of the black powder uh, community as far as, you know, they hunt as our ancestors did, dressed the same way and out there in the dead of winter. In fact, there was one guy that just called him Hard Dog. So if you sign up for him, you're gonna be in Northern Minnesota and you better be prepared. All right, you wanna show me how you load one of these up? Sure. Okay, what I'm lining up now is all the ingredients. Okay. That's a number 11 cap, a percussion cap. Okay. So I'll start loading this up, this one up. So we're getting the black powder right now. About 50 grams, correct? 50 grains. 50 grains. Grains and grams are two different things. Very different things. That could be a that could be a nightmare uh, of a you, day. You bet. Your, but you bet. So anyhow, yeah, the powder's in there. Use the short side. Get it in. Use the longer side. Pound it down. Then our ramrod. Before you shoot this, I'm going to get you. Up. You're going to pick it up. I'm going to set you. You ever started a rifle before? Yes, sir. Okay. You right or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Okay, I'm gonna come around to that side. All right. Keep your finger off the trigger yep. until you're ready to shoot. Yep. Okay, go ahead and hit the target. All right. Okay, rear trigger first, the rear trigger first. Rear trigger first. Okay, that will be easier to fire now. I'd like to believe I hit that target. I think I see the hole. I think I see the hole. Thank you, Tom, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll just lay it right there, I'll yeah. take it. Very good. All right, well, we're gonna get moving along, but I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for the time. Nice meeting you. Absolutely, you too. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at mwomag.com. That's MWOMag.com. Steve, you are, uh, we've had a conversation in the past before. Yes. You are a long range specialist. You like shooting those long shots, even up to a mile away, right? Correct. And that F class stands for something like that, right? Yes. You wanna talk about what you guys do here a little bit once, once over twice a month? Okay, so for F class, we do weekly from uh, May 1st through the end of September. Mm -hmm. Every week, shoot uh, 300 yards uh, prone. But we also have a group that shoots from the uh, bench. 
uh, that because they're no longer capable of laying prone. So they'll shoot the same target from the bench. So basically our target is a half minute uh, scoring rings, which means at 300 yards, the X ring is an inch and a half. Larry Lawless and Brian Anderson hold the league record at uh, a 400, a perfect score perfect. with 39 X's. And that one shot was just barely out, which means an inch and a half group for 40 shots. Crazy. For repeatability. Yeah. And that's what we try to do with the, the shooters is develop them. Uh, Larry's been a long time shooter as Absolutely. have I, and we try to get the new members or someone coming in the league can we help you with uh, reloading? Can we help you with uh, your shooting position? Anything to get you to be a, a better shooter. Absolutely. I do a lot of it for being an ethical hunter. Yes. So that if I see that animal, I want to make sure that it's only one shot and I ethically uh, harvest the animal and then have the venison roasts and everything venison else. Venison jerky, roasts, burgers, you name it, chili. We'll have some chili here in a second, I've been told. Yes. But hey, Steve, I thought, speaking of ethical shooting, um, some animals are small, some are large, but just because they're large doesn't mean your shot should be large. It still should be a very concentrated area. Yes, a percent. Do you want to walk us through some of these locations that a new hunter should be familiar with? So, in the old days, they would have you shoot behind the shoulder, trying to hit the heart or the lungs. But what they found is if you come up the leg and come up towards the scapula, if you're a little bit off on your precision, you will still clip the top of the heart, get the lungs, but you will get the uh, main arteries throughout the deer. And if the deer moved a little bit, you would possibly get the scapula, which would also affect the nervous system and the deer would go down immediately. And if the deer started walking and you aimed a little bit here to try to drop it in, you're still getting all the arteries, the, the shoulder, and you're gonna harvest that animal. Where you wanna stay out of is a gut shot, which would contaminate all the meat, or back here uh, where you have the anal glands, you wouldn't want to uh, put a shot back there on the uh, deer. And the new technology is, instead of you holding the rifle and wobbling, you go to a uh, tripod system. Yep. So you would hide yourself into the brush, sure. the rifle would be sitting there so you're not moving around the deer is not going to no see you yep. and when he comes in then all you're doing is getting in position behind the uh, rifle and putting that shot precisely where you need to absolutely but the other thing is uh illinois is straight wall cartridges where they're going into other states sure. where they have bottleneck cartridges. Yeah. Uh, Bear Creek Ballistics has their straight wall cartridges. And as you can see- That mushroom top mushrooms. Plume. So you're not getting all that shrapnel yeah. through the meat. And then your kid comes over there and swallows it. And now you have to take him to the emergency room yeah. uh, because of the problem. This will expand down to 1,100 feet per second. Wow. Whereas if you did Winchester, Hornady, or Barnes, it, you, it would only do it to 1,800 feet per second. Their rounds uh, go up to 2,200, 2,300 feet per second. Bear Creek Ballistics is doing 2,800 feet per second. Gotcha. So you flatter. So if you're looking for an ammunition that not only can travel a long ways, deliver to your animal quickly, and humanely but safely for our consumption, yes, explode on impact, this stays compact. Correct. 
and they offer it in uh, 450 Bushmaster, uh, 350 Legend, uh, and they have loads that are milder at uh, less feet per second. So your child can start off with that same rifle mm -hmm. and progress to adulthood and you're saving money by only buying one rifle instead of starting with a starter rifle and then progressing to a more powerful rifle as uh, they get older and more experienced and go for bigger game. Very good. That's this week's product review, the Bear Creek Ballistics. Check them out. All right, everyone, we are here with Don in my favorite part, I think, of the Isra range, and that is the shotgun range, range six. And we don't have anyone firing right now, but that's all right. It takes a perfect moment for us to talk about this. Don, it's a little harder to shoot something that's moving than still. Definitely a lot harder, and it depends on what size it's moving to. And when you start hunting birds, you pheasant, you don't know where they're coming up unless yep. you have a dog. Ducks fly 40, 50 miles an hour. It's a different game completely. Absolutely, and I, I'm new to finding out that, you know, the big orange disc isn't the only thing you can shoot. They've got different colors that get smaller, different bigger. Different sizes. Exactly. That's the, that's the fun part when you throw a smaller one on when somebody's not noticing it <laughs> and it goes off the speed of sound and they just look at you. But, like I'm supposed to shoot that? Yeah, you know? it, gets, it gets make it a game, it makes it be fun. But that's, that's important though, right? Because when you're out in the real world, out in the wilderness, you never know what's gonna happen. Nothing goes to plan. Nothing ever flies the way you think it's gonna fly. No. Goes the way you want it to, but that's part of the fun of it. I mean, that's, uh, especially when you're shooting doves, try that, yep. pheasants, quail, you get, a, you know, geese, you get big, get to be big birds, but the bigger they are, it seems the harder they are to hit. Right? They got a little, they got a little more, you know, strength about them. Well, not only that, right? You, you talk about dove or pheasants. A lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, those appear right in front of your face almost. Right. Where a goose and a duck can be quite a bit above you. Hopefully you see them coming a little bit away. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's the advantage of having a dog to hunt, though. So Don, we are, we are right here, opening weekend actually in Waterfall in some states and some areas here in Illinois. Um, what's your favorite part about being able to utilize this range to prepare for your hunting season? Well, the range out here, basically it's open from eight o'clock in the morning till sunset. You have, when you remember, you come in, you've got the key, you come in, you operate the trap yourself. There's uh, ways you can do it with a rope, with little tricks you can use. But it's just a lot of fun shooting and it's, you're shooting against yourself on this. And it, this is what warms you up. It gets you ready for, for birds. I mean, South Dakota, they've already hump, opened that up mm -hmm. and North Dakota and stuff. So it's uh, a big, a lot of fun, to, just a lot of fun to do. And not only that, really, it's, it, it is, like you said, it's fun. It's year round entertainment yes. um, this is something you can do with friends family youth uh, you know your significant other it's something that everyone can kind of try whether they love it or not it's at least a challenge and a cool experience well that's the advantage of having a range like this we have a bunch of boy scout groups come out they use the range we let them use the range they camp here yep. uh, Anybody can come out here. The traps are three quarter cock traps, so you're not killing yourself yep. when you're cocking them. Yep. And people even bring their own electronic traps out here. You sure. can do that. No, no rule against that. And like I said, you just, you're against you and the bird. Absolutely. Well, I might throw you some different patterns. I might you know, throw them up there, see if you can get my own pattern. Huh? Good luck. Well, hey, I think it's time. Uh, I think I need to break some of these clays real quick. Knock, heck, knock yourself off. All right, let's go. Our outdoor tour of the Isra range is about over, but the crown jewel we had to stop at, and that is the 300 yard range here. Um, they have electronic targets from White Mountain where they actually have iPads set up so our shooters can see instant results and know what they have to do to adjust 
I had Ed here. Ed's a first timer here at the Illinois State Rifle yep. Association range. And Ed, what do you think about the facility and everything? Yeah, very nice. Uh, this is my first time shooting at anything over 100 yards. So mm -hmm. um, great experience. Um, like you said, you got a little iPad here that after you shoot, you see exactly where you're shooting at. And uh, my first shot, as I've said, I have not shoot, shot over anything 100, um, was quite off the target. And you could see that queer, very clearly on there. Um, they helped me out with adjusting the elevation a little bit. Um, next two shots were close to the bullseye. I'm happy with it. And you see that again instantly. So yeah, yeah absolutely. very, very cool facility. There's not many places you can even go to, to shoot really this far, mm -hmm. right? No. <laughs> it's hard to find unless yeah. you have own a farm where you you can come out and shoot. Yeah. The, uh, second highest I saw was like 200 yards or something like that. Yeah. I forgot the name of the place, but yeah. Yeah. So it's a unique thing to have and it's it's important because especially if you're shooting somewhere you got a 300 wind mag here you said you're going to kentucky maybe next year yeah um but it's important right because you're not always going to get that call in you no. know you're never <laughs> you're not always going to get them uh 20 yeah. 50 feet away yeah yeah and um and one of the things I want to use this gun for too down in Kentucky is black bear hunting. And I don't want to get a hundred yards within a black no, bear. No, no, so. we, we, we try to stay away from them a little bit. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, wh when you're preparing for the season, Ed, what, uh, what are some things that you always mentally have a checklist about? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very anal with my gear. So, um, I've got a, I've got a checklist of, of gear at home. I don't want to get into the field and realize I forgot my binoculars or something. So, um, yeah, that's that's the big thing, and um, yeah, once I'm in the field, just stay and calm with the shot. It's obviously not easy. <laughs> yeah, your heart's uh, racing a little bit. Your sights, but uh, yeah, those those are the big things for me. Just making sure I'm not forgetting anything critical and, and getting my practice in because you know um, it's up to us to make sure we you know have a good shot and yeah, I'm ethical not kills, trying to wound anything. So. Exactly, exactly, yeah. and at the end of the day, it's. That's very important. The safety that you don't shoot something beyond mm -hmm. that you're, you know, aiming for is important. But then let's be honest, you don't want to leave empty handed either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to make sure that happens. Yep. What, um, earlier we didn't catch you, but you said you were also sighting in your slug gun, right? Yes. So it was cool because you could do multiple things here. You know, we've talked uh -huh. about it from pistol to archery to slug. They have almost everything here. Yep. Yeah, it was uh, super, super helpful. Um, everyone here has been very helpful with helping get everything set up. And um, yeah, it's been very nice today. Absolutely. What do you think? Do you think uh, you're not a member that your first time yeah. here? Would you <laughs> recommend uh, joining or you are thinking it yourself? I would. Yeah, I definitely would. Yeah. Um, it seems like a very nice facility. I only shot at the 100 yard and the 300 yard range, but um, they've got quite a lot of other uh, ranges here. So yeah. absolutely. So, Ed, we're getting ready for this season, but you told me you're only a few seasons deep into hunting, right? Mm -hmm. What um, what was that reason that you got into hunting? Yeah, so um, probably a little cliche, but I used to listen to a lot of Joe Rogan. <laughs> hey, we're a fan of the um, Rogan experience. And um, so there was a mixture of that. I think Steve Rinella came on yep. from Meat Eater, yep. um, and then I started watching his show and everything and um, just got hooked. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to find a way to get more ethically you know, produced meat. Yeah. Um, I'm not obviously uh, a fan of, um, you know, factory farming and stuff, sure. super gross. Um, so I got into this and yeah, I've been loving it. Got three deer so far. Um, uh, freezer's always been full yeah. and, um, yeah, I, I enjoy it very much getting out in nature. Mm -hmm. Um, it's great. And even if you don't get anything, you're sitting out there, um, you know, just watching the sunrise at, at 4 a.m. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. That's... Yeah. There's no better way to spend time with the people you love with than in the outdoors. Yeah. There's no better place to reset by yourself either mm -hmm. to get out there, you know, and just relax and take it all in. Absolutely. But yeah. yes, if you're looking for a way to not only improve the food that you're putting in your body, mm -hmm. chemical free, you right. know, process free, um, but also a, yeah, a more humane and a more ethical way, uh, it's more sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. More than anything, you know? Yeah. So the resources are here. Why don't we utilize yeah. them, right? Absolutely. All right, Ed. Well, hey, we're going to go inside to talk about the air rifle range that they have here. And I'm going to say good luck on your hunts this year, all right? All right. Thank you very much. I all heard right. there's uh, three different types of chili in there. So. Three different types of chili. <laughs> Let's go have a chili off. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. 
with fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at mwomag.com. That's mwomag.com. All right, everyone. Well, just like that, that is the end of our day here at the ISRA range. And hey, if you just wanna become members of this awesome organization, for only $35, you can sign up right now or come down, check out these facilities in Bonfield, Illinois, right outside of Kankakee, Illinois. And you can utilize the ranges, whether it's archery, pistols, shotgun, rifle, they have it all. It's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of this organization. I grew up truly loving to shoot. Um, it started at BB guns in the Scouts and progressed from there. Now learning how to shoot a bow so that I can get into archery hunting next year. It can all be done right here. And it's not too far from my home, right on the south side of Chicago. So it's a great place. And hey, what a better way to end season one of the Midwest Outdoors podcast. I wanna thank every single one of you guys at home for making this possible. Season two is gonna be even better. We're gonna do some more traveling. We have a new look to the office that I can't wait to show you guys. And we're just gonna have so many great guests and learn from hunting to foraging to fishing. I can't wait. Special thanks to Fish Daddy for an amazing year and we can't wait for season two. Again, big thanks to everyone here at the ISRA range that made today possible. I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, safe hunting, and we'll see you guys on the water. Tight lines. Mm -hmm.